The streets of downtown Toronto once again welcomes the fastest show on wheels as it hosts the Napa Grand Prix of Toronto for the Champ Car World Series. For the first time since Indianapolis, the full field of 26 are present, with some news to coincide the occasion. In Lausitz, Alicia Kovalkiewicz suffered extensive injuries in a crash that saw her flip a total of 31 times, pulling some massive strings. Cherokee GP has managed to pull a driver from Renault's F1 team. Renault, the parent company of Alpine, whose uh, engines are in the Cher- Cherokee GP cars. Um, so Siri Lundquist is back in the Champ Car grid after almost five years away uh, racing in F1. Swift Autosport has returned to the grid, having secured an entry for the rest of the year, with Brad Neri, who debuted in Texas for Elm Competition. So he'll be piloting the car for his first ever road course race in Champ Car. Team Impulse has brought Hazel LaCasse back. Um, she's been running the road courses in uh, BK Glover's stead, while Thomas Rogers has been doing the ovals. And as you can see, LaCasse there on the front row, off to the left-hand side. She's on pole. So she'll be here for Toronto and Belle Isle. Black Rose Racing gets Jace Clark back. Jace Clark has been missing since Homestead with an injury. So he's missed the past four races, but he's finally back. Getting back into the swing of things, his first road course race, his first race in Toronto. Not so well in qualifying. So, with driver changes out of the way, let's discuss the circuit. It's one of the most prominent street circuits around the world, having been run 30 times in the past 37 years. The circuit is made entirely from public access roads, wrapping around Exhibition Place, which is the home of the Pan American Games. And it utilizes the now famous Lakeshore Boulevard, which is the long straightaway connecting turns two to turn three. It's just under 1.8 miles in length, 11 corners, seven to the right, four to the left. The biggest passing opportunities are in the braking zones into turn one and at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard into turn three. And as you can see, the transitions from tarmac to blacktop will be a significant challenge, especially with the bumpiness in those transitions and how abrasive the concrete is on the Firestone tires. So there's a lot of rookies in this field. Hazel Lacasse is one of them. You have Gerard Perth, and as another one. These drivers did fantastic. Dave Wessel starting uh, in sixth position behind his teammate uh, Andrew Draco starting in fourth. Dave Wessel's never been on Toronto before. Doing fantastic, handled the challenging track very well. So it's interesting seeing how teams have approached it. Obviously. Sounds for Racing Team Impulse. Team Impulse has done a fantastic job. First and third qualifying for Lacasse and Sakura Ishibashi. Isabella Spinoza, we talked about... There's been so much news, so much conversation in the past two weeks over Isabella Spinoza. She announced that she was leaving Escuderia Aguia at the end of the season. Um, she's now the biggest free agent name on the grid right now. And she's starting on the outside of the front row. A very favorable starting position as... As favorable as you can get it. If you can get a run out of turn one, which is where the field corners round, if you can get a good starting position, if you can get a good run out of turn one, she could lead the race going into turn three. It, it's going to be a challenge, but Espinosa is known for going wheel to wheel. We saw her do it at Phillip Island. We saw her do it at St. Petersburg and Brno. Workhorses courses are Espinosa's strengths, and uh, she is the better of the two Aguia cars. What is what is going on in the team dynamic between the 36 car of, es- of Isabel Espinosa and the more experienced, obviously the world class driver starting in ninth position, Christine Espinosa in the 48 car. We know that Christine's gonna be staying in, in the Gia team. Isabel's moving out. Where does Isabel go? A couple of drivers on the front row trying to make a name for themselves and show that they are in high demand, but we are close to getting the command for all the drivers to start their engines and begin the formation lap here in Toronto. So we'll send it down track side to hear the command. Drivers, start your engines. And there we have it. So we'll talk about the front row. We, it's his LaCasse, her first ever pole position in her champ car career, right next to Isabel Espinosa in the 36 car. 
Isabel Spinoza trying to make a championship contending run, knowing this is her last year and the, and the team that her family has run for decades. A lot of emotions running high for Isabel Espinosa. A lot of emotions running high for Hazel Lacasse as she tries to make herself known in the Champ Car Paddock. An amazing start to do so. Row 2 is Sakura Ishibashi and the championship race leader Andrew Draco. Seven points is the gap between Draco and Porter Kelly. Porter Kelly starting in fifth position in row 3 right next to Draco's teammate David Wessel. So, we talked about the first three rows there with, obviously, you see uh, Porter Kelly, David Wessel. Row four is Gerard Perth, who was fastest in Q1. Unfortunately, didn't get to keep, this, the I guess, the, the pace in Q2. Dropped down to seventh. And then Kaylee Zappa, the best of the Cat Dove racing cars you see in the all-white in row four. Ray Taylor, the hometown driver. From Bowmanville, not too far away from here in Toronto. He's going to be starting in ninth position. No, starting in 10th position, excuse me. Christina Spinoza is starting ninth. Row 6, 11th and 12th is Kinemisa Kenoshita and Nicole Lechty. Lechty, normally very good at qualifying. Normally very good at qualifying on street circuits. It's just barely scraped by in Q1 and didn't get any higher than 12th position in Q2. The last position available for those that did make it through Q2. You see that there's issues with Kurachenko's car. As we look down the grid, they're almost to the pit lane straight. So it seems like she is trying to get off to the side to get into pit lane. Tyler Parker's trying to stay there. There's an issue there. So hopefully, hopefully she gets in. There's also an issue there with Lucian Lachapel. So Lachapel hasn't gotten, been able to get off the grid. And Natalia Kurachenko's had issues. So two drivers already having issues on the start. So we're going green here in Toronto with already chaos. Lashbell didn't take the green and he was supposed to be starting in the top half of the field. Lacasse holds the lead over Ismael Espinosa. You see Porter Kelly trying to move. She's already jumped almost two positions here, getting past Sakura Ishibashi. Ishibashi not holding much of an issue there. Andrew Draco with a very appalling start. Looks like she's looks like Draco's been held up massively by Ishibashi. Ishibashi didn't get a good start at all. So Ishibashi falls down to fourth. She started third. Draco's down. A position he was fourth start, currently sitting fifth david wessel's sitting sixth he hasn't lost anything but right now it's all hazel lacasse as clean as you'd like it krachenko's back out tyler parker's back out lachapel is getting his issues going we're assuming it is an electrical issue but he's finally fired and ready to go already one lap down it's going to be a very long day for lucian lachapel his first race in Toronto, his first street uh, street course race in Champ Car, not starting off well. Looking at Lacasse, she's got three quarters of a second lead over Isabel Espinosa. She was running second most of the race in Valkenburg until her engine expired. That's kind of been the name of the game for Lacasse. She was running well in Indianapolis until a technical failure removed her from the race. This is her third event, so fingers crossed that Lacasse can bring some solid points in this time around. It seems like it's all been reliability for Lacasse and for the the Alpine engines in general. Uh, Team Impulse and Cherokee GP have not had a fair share of luck compared to those running Mercedes or Honda engines. But it's an Alpine leaning. Rumors swirling that the Alpine badge will be removed for a pure Renault badge in 2021. No official announcement on that yet, but the rumors are beginning to circulate, especially with Renault's 
increase involvement in champ card. You look further down the order, you see Ray Taylor's hoarding ninth. He started 10th, so he's gained a position. He jumped Christina Espinoza on the start. Most of the top 10, however, has not changed. Porter Kelly is the only big mover in the top 10. She moved from 5th to 3rd. And she needs to move from 5th to 3rd. If she can stay in front of Draco by this many positions, she will regain the points championship lead. Draco's got to find an answer and get around Sakura Ishibashi. Ishibashi is a very formidable driver. Multiple wins under her resume. Sakura Ishibashi, considered by most in the Japanese racing community to be one of the best drivers who have never raced in Formula 1. She has, however, raced in Le Mans. In 2015, won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So now she's come to Champ Car pursuing the Indianapolis 500. She's a lead driver for Team Impulse, but right now she's sitting second on that team. Obviously with the cast being a teammate, and then Tyler Parker sitting further down the grid after a, a very mistake-riddled qualifying run yesterday. Looking further down the grid, you see Gerard Perth sitting 7th. Kelly Zappa 8th, those two where they were starting. Ray Taylor got in front of Christina Spinoza, so Espinoza's got to do a little bit of work to do. Try to get past Ray Taylor as well as defend from Nicole Lechte. Le Lechte's got a position out of uh, Kenosha, so those two have swapped positions from the start. Keisha Fox holding 13th. Ezra Hobson holding 14th. Though they're where they started. Someone who has gained positions is Patrick Marcelli. Marcelli started... 17th, and he's up to 15th, so he's gained two positions as well. You've got Simona LaRoe in the 78 car. She's sitting 16th. And you see teammates possibly going to be battling each other, both the Eastern Atlantic Motorsports cars, the 28 and the 82. Marcelli thinks better of it. You see how many people are in the grandstands and sitting in the RV uh, spaces here around the street circuit. It's been a very festive week. Canada Day was on Wednesday. Obviously, this weekend has been all about Independence Day in the United States. So, a lot of festive people this weekend in mass here in Toronto. So, looking at Patrick Marcelli as he sits 15th, Simona LaRoe 16th, Siri Lundquist. And her first race back after spending four and a half years in Formula 1. She's sitting 17th. She started 19th. Said qualifying wasn't what she was hoping for. Wasn't used to the... Uh, wasn't expecting the traffic. Wasn't used to the car. She's used to having a lot of electronic assists, power steering, hybrid energy. None of that exists in these cars. And for her, a lot of it comes down to the car. Uh, the... The current car made by Andromeda Automotive Initiative, or AAI, as we'll often uh, call the company, moved a lot of the downforce to ground effects, which is where a lot of grip comes from under the car. Kind of seals the car to the road. So, she's not used to that. She's used to a lot of the over-the-top downforce, a lot of a lot more downforce. Um, and that's simply not something that exists. She's used to probably tires uh, in Formula 1. We have Firestones here in Champ Car. So a lot of things that she's going to have to relearn. And Toronto's not an easy place to learn. As we, we see them go down Lakeshore Boulevard down into Turn 3. We see Cameron Jackson, another driver that has spent a lot of time in Formula 1. Uh, was a Formula 1 up until 2014. Since 2014, he's been here in the United States. Dallas, Texas native. Multiple-time race winner. Has shown a, a lot of increased performance up until this point. Qualifying didn't go his way either. Qualifying affected most people around this track. For those that aren't familiar with, uh, with Champ Car qualifying, there's two stages of qualifying. Q1 is where all 26 cars go out on track at the same point of time for 15 minutes. 
the top 12 cars with the fastest times advance to Q2, which is essentially the pole shootout. The top 12 all get to battle for pole position, and where they end up in that Q2 session is where they start. So a lot of drivers, a lot of big names that were consistently in Q2 missed out this weekend. Cameron Jackson being one of them. With Lundqvist coming from Formula 1 midseason, a very rare move by a driver, especially of her caliber. A lot of expectation was on her to be at least close to Q2. But she was soundly outperformed by her rookie teammate, Keisha Fox. Fox qualified 13th, she qualified 19th. Fox has not made any positions. Keisha, uh, Keisha Fox still sitting at 13th now, just up the road. Siri Lundqvist has gained two positions, one of the biggest movers in the race so far, along with Patrick Marcelli and Stephanie Porter Kelly. So you see Cameron Jackson, you see Jesus Cristobal. And Cristobal is definitely an oval expert. Um, road courses, road and street courses, definitely not his forte. But for the team, if something happens to Perth or Taylor, he should be able to, to cut uh, to to keep the team afloat this weekend to bring back a positive result. Jay Clark in his first race back, we talked about his injury at Homestead. Black Rose Racing utilized Asher Crane as a substitute driver. Crane, another one of those free agents going into 2021. Jay Clark might feel a little bit of pressure. I think Black Rose Racing might be interested in keeping Crane for 2021. Otherwise, they might lose her to another team like Rasgris Racing, or especially if they if they lose her to a team like Catduff Racing or Team Impulse, a lot of disaster could be spelled. So Jace Clark's got to perform really well, and it's been a rough transition back into racing for him. Brad Neri is trying to keep himself afloat, not doing the best. He's twenty first. He started twenty fourth. So he's gained several positions now. Obviously, the biggest objective for, for Brad Neri is to learn. Uh, he's not had a lot of time in the car. The team wasn't really built around him. But they're trying to make the best of the situation. And he's sitting in front of both the Apex Racing cars, who in qualifying were dead last, 25th and 26th. Uh, they're sitting... 22nd, 23rd now. LaChapelle is two laps down. Natalia Kurochenko with had issues early, and so did Tyler Parker. So they're still last of all the cars that have not had issues by a sound amount. Up front, it's still Hazel LaCasp. The gap has stayed steady. It's 0.8 seconds between her and Isabel Espinoza. LaCasp's situation is super interesting. Team Impulse right now has five drivers on the docket. BK Glover is injured. He's slated to come back for Pocono. So Lacasse has got Toronto and Belle Isle in two weeks to make her case as to why she needs a full-time seat. And Team Impulse have an important decision to make. The likes of Thomas Rogers and BK Glover, proven champ car race winners. Hazel DeCasse, however, could be the future of the team. Uh, the team principal, Asumi Matsuo, a very forward-thinking team principal for Team Impulse. She's said to be very high on having Hazel back with the team in a full-time capacity in 2021. Right now, she's proving why. The Alpine engine's Rumored to be the lowest powered of the three engines on the grid between Honda and Mercedes. But she's making the most of it right now. She's sitting 0.9. She gained some time that lap over Isabel Espinosa. You see, it's really it's just the top six. The top six have such a gap, almost three seconds between David Wessel and Gerard Perth. It's Alpine, Honda, Mercedes on the podium right now with Porto Kelly sitting third. And the two top performing Team Impulse cars sitting first and fourth with uh, Sakura Shibashi still sitting 
and forth. So a lot of eyes on LaCasse, a lot of eyes on Ray Taylor as he tries to keep Christina Spinoza behind him. A lot of eyes on Isabel Spinoza and a lot of eyes on Siri Lundquist as she tries to work up the field on her first race back for Cherokee GP. Going through turns three and turns four, through turn five now is Hazel LaCasse. Pit stops not too far away. Pit stops will be happening in about six or seven laps. The pit window is about 22 to 25 laps. So three, possibly four pit stops could be required by the teams today. The Firestone, Firehawk tires, the red walls that you see on the cars are a very softer compound. They're faster than the standard tires that we see on the ovals. But they wear a lot quicker. They they blister. And overall, you just can't use them as much. Especially with the, the abrasive concrete and the bumpy uh, asphalt that you see them running on right now as they run through Lakeshore Boulevard. Makes tire wear an absolute premium. We talk a lot about Lacasse, Espinoza, Porter Kelly. Right now, fifth and sixth for Phantom Motorsports. Jean Claude Gabriel, the team principal. Team's based out of Canada. Jean Claude Gabriel founded the team. Uh, even though the team's got an, uh, an American base in Indianapolis, the team very much is Canadian. So, them sitting fifth and sixth, and essentially what is their home race. After starting 4th and 6th. Phantom Motorsports, that team all around looking pretty happy. I would happen to say. And then there's the gap all the way back to Gerard Perth. His first genuine good race so far. Knock on wood. Didn't really get to race much. In, in Valkenburg. He was nowhere to be seen in, in Lausitz. But he's come back to form here, sitting in 7th. And Kaylee Zappa sitting 8th. She's the best champ, uh, cat of racing t driver in points. Right now, she's the best of the three cars for cat of racing on track. And you see the gap from Christine Espinosa all the way back. It's like two seconds, I believe. Yeah, almost two seconds on the dot. You see Nicole Lecti sitting 11th, trying to fend off from Kinomitsu Kenoshida. And then Keisha Fox and Esther Hofson sitting right behind. Two of the stronger rookies in the field. Hofson sitting in the just outside the top 10 of points. Keisha Fox sitting firmly in the top 10 of points. The battle for Rookie of the Year. Very hot right now, and especially with Natalia Kurachenko sitting so far back in the in the field right now. Points can be gained on that Rookie of the Year campaign. For a lot of rookies, that's the prize. Kurachenko, within range to put in an actual championship, uh, a, a title fight. But she needs a lot of bad things to happen to her team owner, Stephanie Porter Kelly, and the championship leader, Andrew Draco, in order to, to keep from losing more points. She's 39 points back entering this race. Gonna be more than 50 points back if things ended up as they are now. You see, looks like Lecti's struggling with the tires. Kenosha might try to make a move going into turn three. She's as close as she's been to Lecti's gearbox. Breaking zone to turn three is very bumpy, very wiggly. Kenosha breaks earlier. It's better safe than sorry for Kenosha is what we're assuming there. She's She just went wide. Almost locked the tires up there. That's what Kenosha. So Lefty is able to pull out a little bit, more, little bit more of a gap. So 
So we're starting lap 20 now. We're already a, almost a quarter of the way through this race. There's already a car in pit lane. And it looks like that was Tyler Parker. Yeah, that was indeed Tyler Parker in the number six car. So he's going a lap down now. You see Kurachenko's on her own. Almost a lap down already. So the first set of pit stops might become very critical. The gap between Lacasse and Espinosa is just 1.1 seconds. Right in the final couple of corners. They're not going to pit this time. This is very much a track where an undercut could be very appropriate. For those a bit unfamiliar, an undercut is a strategy where you pit before your opponent and try to use fresh tires to make up ground and make up time and hopefully leapfrog that position. Um, it's usually been effective. But with how cold these tires are, there's no tire warming, there's no tire blankets. The, the, tire, the tires are very cold when they first are put on a car. So a driver has to be very careful not to wreck on that first lap out of pit lane. It's hard to tell whether or not a an undercut will work or not. But it will be a question of who blinks first. Will, the, will it be Hazel Lacasse who's had the, the, the freshest air of all of the drivers so far? Or is it going to be Isabel Espinosa? Espinosa was really far back, but Lacasse blinks first. She'll pit on lap 21. Espinosa will take the lead. So it's Espinosa, Porter Kelly. Ishibashi with a very late break. Closes the gap to Porter Kelly. That was ambitious. Very late breaking maneuver by Ishibashi. She made a stick. Closes the gap to Porter Kelly. It'll be interesting to see if both the Phantom Motorsports cars take the same strategy or not. Espinosa's coming in. Ishibashi does not. Ishibashi makes the most of it, so she's going to inherit the lead just one lap later. And she is going to lap, I think, maybe. Yeah, she's going to end up trying to lap Ronald Walker in the Apex Racing Team car. So, Ronald Walker and Cameron Jackson just exited the pit lane. Cameron Jackson entering turn three now. Ronald Walker trying to stay on the lead lap as much as he can. Apex Racing Team, arguably the, the, the least productive team in the champ car grid. Ronald Walker, however, making sure that team stays, stays as, as competitive as it can. Unsure why the team has failed to produce any updates, any upgrades to the cars. Especially given how feisty and how full of energy Ronald Walker is. He's one of the most competent drivers in the champ car grid. So it's a shame for him. Jace Clark coming in the pit lane now. Tyler Parker is going to try to get a lap back here. You see Ishibashi entering her pit stall now. There is entire Karachenko. She's going to try to stay on the lead lap. So there's Hazel Lacasse coming through the final corner now. She's going to easily carry the lead. By a full margin. And it's going to be Ishibashi in second place. So fantastic pit stops by Team Impulse. Puts them 1-2. Here in Toronto after the first round of green flag pit stops. So Ishibashi with an amazing pit stop has jumped from 4th to 2nd. And the gap between 6th and 7th is closed. So that's Andrew Draco now in 6th. Getting jumped by his rookie teammate David Wessel. 
And Gerard Perth in 7th. A lot closer now. Kelly Zapp is still sitting 8th. Ninth is still Gerard. Is not Gerard, but Ray Taylor. And then 10th is now Nicole Lecti. Keisha Fox is 11th. 12th is Patrick Marcelli. Cameron Jackson's 13th. He's gained several positions. Christina Spinoza with a miserable pit stop. Puts her right in front of Siri Lundquist. Lundquist is right in front of Jace Clark. Jace Clark ahead of Hazy's Cristobal. Then you've got Ronald Walker. Kinemitsu Kenosha with a miserable pit stop. She was up in 11th or 12th position. And now she's down near the bottom of the table. Esther Hoffson with a similar situation. Very bad pit stops for Esther Hoffson and Kenosha. You see Lucian Lachapelle, two laps down. LaRoe with a bad pit stop. Cody Blackman sitting last of all the regular runners that haven't had any issues yet. See Natalia Kurochenko trying to stay on the lead lap. Less than half a lap from getting lapped by Hazel Lacasse. Lacasse with an amazing lead. That's the gap from first to second. Five seconds is the gap. 4.75 4 now, so Sakura Shibashi definitely putting the hammer down now. But what a set of pit stops by Team Impulse. Keeping their head drivers out in front and making it a 1-2 potentially. Fantastic performance by Team Impulse and by Alpine. Alpine engines have not had a chance to score a 1-2 this season. I have to think back to St. Petersburg, where they finished first and third. Ishibashi won that one with BK Glover finishing third. But they've never really had a chance to be in a 1-2 position since then. Street circuits might play in the Alpine's hands. So a fantastic job. So we're going to keep her eye on Lacasse here as she stays in the front. Ishibashi's clawing away little by little. But she's pulling Ishibashi with her. Not Ishibashi, Espinosa with her. But there's Ishibashi sitting in second. Espinosa third. Fourth is Porter Kelly. Fifth is David Wessel. We were beginning to wonder when Wessel was going to start challenging Draco for positions. In the last couple races, we're starting to see Wessel come into his own. He's starting to challenge a couple of world champions here. Draco, the 2017 world champion. Stephanie Porter Kelly, the two-time IndyCar world champion. A fantastic display by Wessel so far. Fantastic display of the last couple races. Unfortunately, an engine failure took him out of the lead in Lausitz. But he was looking fantastic up until that point. So the hope for Phantom Motors is now that their young rookie can lead them into the future. But fifth and sixth for for Phantom, no laughing matter. That team is in a position to possibly strike, especially with at least two more pit stops to go. Gerard Perth is falling back from the top six once again. It's opening up a gap similar to what was opened up before that first round of pit stops. However, that round of pit stops that Gerard Perth had put them right on the cusp of getting back into the top five. For Perth, that would have been a godsend. Kelly Zapp is still sitting 8th, and it's Ray Taylor and Nicole Lecty finishing out the top 10. 13.5 seconds behind the race leader of Hazel Lacasse. Keisha Fox sitting 11th. She's gained two positions now. One of the biggest movers has to be Patrick Marcelli. Started 17th, sitting 12th. Five positions gained. 
Cameron Jackson, I think, has the most positions gained, bar none. Started 20th, up to 13th, seven positions up from the start. Cameron Jackson's on the move. He's trying to get as close to the top 10 as possible. If a caution comes out, or if he has another great pit stop like what he did before, he'll be in it. We talked about how poor of a of a pit stop that Christina Spinoza had. She's down all the way down to 14th position. She was sitting 10th, so she's lost four positions. But now look at all that traffic she has to deal with. She has to deal with Keisha Fox, who is no slouch. Patrick Marcelli, who has recently started to fight really well. Cameron Jackson, who's had top five after top five as of late. You think about Valkenberg, you think about Lausitz. Cameron Jackson has showed that he has come to race, that he's come to fight. Elbows out for the veteran in the number 19 car. Christina Spinoza has a lot to fight for. Things are unraveling in Aguia and at such a rapid rate. It is baffling. And it's, it's odd how the driver that's staying in the team for next year is where all the issues currently lie. You see Siri Lundquist sitting in 15th. She's gained four positions from her starting position now. So Lundquist is on the charge a little bit, trying to get a hold of Christina Spinoza. Last time... Christina Spinoza and Siri Lundquist were on the grid together. Everyone knew Siri Lundquist as Aurora Lundquist. It was her rookie race, the 100th annual Indianapolis 500 back in 2012. Siri has matured a lot since then. And now she's back and she says she's enjoying it. She's making the most of the opportunity and who knows where it goes. But Lundquist sits 15th ahead of Jace Clark, who's up to 16th position. Jace Clark started in this next to last row of the grid. He's, he started 22nd. And he's already up to 16th position. He's almost gained six spots from the start of the race. It is Crystal Ball sitting relatively steady in 17th position right now. You see, Ronald Walker's gained positions for Apex Racing Team after starting... On the back row, starting next to last. His rookie teammate, Cody Blackman, starting last. A lot of changes might be needed at Apex in order for them to actually end up being competitive. Looking further back, you see Brad Neri in the 50, the, the yellow, black, and white. Then you have Simone LaRoe sitting further back. Highlight Racing having a weekend to forget so far. Then you see Cody Blackman. Sitting 23rd. Tyler Parker trying to stay above. Trying to stay on the lead lap. He's going to have some competition as there's Natalia Kurachenko. Both of them had opening had a uh, formation lap. Fiasco. Both of them had to come in for, uh, to pit lane on the start, and they've not been anywhere close to anybody else at all so far this race. Keeping an eye on Hazel Lacasse. The gaps come down. It was five seconds after the pit, uh, the first round of pit stops. It's now below four seconds. So Sakura Shibashi's definitely reeling in. But how much of that is Hazel Lacasse saving tires? Lacasse is no slouch. Lacasse is a very smart driver. She's got a very smart engineer in that pit box. Likely feeding her this information. So she's probably trying to stretch out these tires and make them last. We're expecting in the next round of pit stops to be a lap, about lap 44. About 9 laps from now. Hazel blinked first the first time around. She got the undercut by a significant amount.
it's very possible that she could do the same this time and make it work even more. You see, there's the gap. Now that you see both sets of cars in the in the the view range. A couple laps now where it's holding steady at four seconds. One would like to believe that Lacasse might try, if she holds this gap, that she might try to hold it out and stay out a little bit longer this time. Just to make it more comfortable when that final stint happens and try to make sure that you solidify a three pit stop race. Because as it stands now, Lacasse needs to stretch the tires out. Otherwise, she might be forced to do a four-stop race, if she, especially if she doesn't treat the tires well enough. When and a four, especially with the pit delta, the pit, the pit speed is thirty-seven miles an hour. It's a very slow pit lane. A pit delta is close to forty-three seconds, forty-three, forty-four seconds. That's a lot of time, and if she has to make an extra pit stop, especially over Ishibashi and Espinoza, that is costly. That is from first to very low down the grid, especially given how she was the first one to pit, and not many people followed her that lap. She would end up closer to midfield, so she needs to make sure that she stretches these set of tires out at least a couple more laps than what she did the first time around. She needs to aim a little bit closer to 43 or lap 44. Just try to get a couple more laps out of the car, uh, out of the tires. And you see the gaps opening up back again, so she's starting to push a little bit harder now. It's 4.6 seconds. It was uh, just under 4 seconds just a couple laps ago, so now she's opening about a quarter second or three tenths of a, uh, a second gap per lap now. So she's opening up the salvo. So a lot of a lot of difficulties now strategically for Lacasse, despite her dominant performance so far. The only time she's been she's relinquished the lead is for pit stops. She's led almost every lap. As we look at the fastest lap, she doesn't have the fastest lap so far. That goes to Stephanie Porter Kelly. That's a 55.118 second lap. A very quick pit lane. You see Andrew Draco only three three thousandths of a second slower than the fastest lap. Isabel Espinosa also only 55 ones, same with Hazel Lacasse. Sakura Shibashi with a 55-2. Same with Patrick Marcelli. Brad Neri is up in the top ten of the fastest laps. 55.27. Gerard Perth. Uh David Wessel and then Keisha Fox. That is a top ten fastest laps. The 14 of Wessel and the 62 of Fox with 55 threes. A lot of work being done right now. You see, that gap is just massive. 5.3. That gap opened up by over half a second that lap alone. So Ishibashi's sitting and she's sitting relatively comfortable. She's not under pressure from from Ishibashi, not Ishibashi, from Estenoza. How many times am I going to make that mistake? She's not in her challenge from Isabel. Isabel's not being challenged by Stephanie Porter Kelly. Porter Kelly's sitting in a distant fourth. Porter Kelly's got some issues with the Phantom Motorsports cars. David Wessel's trying to move up positions. So is Andrew Draco. This is their home race. You see LM Competition, the home team, another home team. I should say. There's two. You have CN Rail sponsoring the 34 and the 32. Gerard Perth being the better of the two so far, but both the 32 and the 34 in the top 10. Ray Taylor, the hometown, uh, really the hometown hero. Two-time champ car race winner. He's sitting ninth so far today. A fresh change of pace for Ray Taylor, and especially for the Allen Competition team, which has had a rough year so far. 
You think about the injuries with Perth. You think about the injury with, with Mildred Moon, which she's still sitting out for, for right now. Um, the team taking it race by race now as she recovers. Expecting Mildred Moon to be back, hopefully before Pocono. But having both teams in the top 10 and having both cars for both the main drivers sitting in the top 10 at this race symbolically means a lot to the team. You'd have to believe that if the, the team is, is hot on the heels of trying to make sure that that stays that way, Nicole Lecti setting a 10th, trying to put a little bit of pressure, but Dirty Air, I think, is having more of an effect on that now as we get ready to approach the second round of green flag pit stops. We've not had a caution yet. Knock on wood. I'm knocking on my desk right now. As we get ready to approach the second round of pit stops, it could be pure strategy call to determine who finishes where in this race. It's, it's pockets of drivers. You see this pocket between 9th and 10th. It's its own bubble. You have to look two seconds further back to see Keisha Fox, Patrick Marcelli, Cameron Jackson, and Christina Espinoza. And then there's a bit more of a gap between Espinoza and Siri Lundquist. So you've got these pockets of drivers. And pit stops can very well shuffle the order of these pockets of drivers. The only the certain thing that we have right now is that if Hazel Lacasse has another... Even if it's just a, a decent pit stop, she's still going to emerge with the lead of this race when this second round of pit stops is over. Hazel Lacasse has been a woman on a mission. For assuming Matsuo, her recruiting, I, I guess her recruiting prowess could have paid dividends if Hazel Lacasse can get a win here. It'll be the team's second one of the season. You see, as you go through the field a little bit more, start going further back, you see Tyler Parker. Tyler Parker is, I believe, a lap down now. Yeah, indeed, he is a lap down. Natalia Kravchenko is the last car on the lead lap. All 26 cars are, are running. So we're going to go on board with a rookie here. We're going to go on board for a lap to see how the strategy plays out here. We're on worn tires. Tires are blistering badly. But we're going on board with Dave Wessel, who's sitting right between two world champions. And we'll let you hear for a lap exactly how they handle this 1.8 mile circuit. All right, so as you're seeing on board, we're on board with David Wessel. You saw Hazel Lacasse came in first once again. So she pitted on up 42. She did try to make it a little bit uh, further. She went 21 laps again. Ishibashi went in the lap before. So now Espinoza is leading the race with Portacali second and David Wessel now sitting in third, who we're riding aboard with now. The Phantom Motorsports car split strategies. Andrew Draco went in that last lap, so now it's David Wessel and then a five second gap back to Kaylee Zappa. So a big change in the strategy there for the Phantom Motorsports car is that they try to figure out 
who can make it the furthest? It seems like David Wessel might have taken better care of his tires than Andrew Draco has. So he's going to stay out for a lap longer. In fact, he's going to go in this time. And you see as they run over the, the curb stones, exactly how difficult that is. So Espinosa's in. So is Porter Kelly. So is David Wessel. So is Kaylee Zappa. Gerard Pert, not Gerard Pert, that is Ray Taylor that's in now as well. So now we're going to have to try to score down and see. You see how many people are in. That was Hazel Lacasse going by now. That's Hazel Lacasse already in the turn one. What a... And you hear, you hear fireworks going off. It is Independence Day weekend. A lot of celebrations going on both in the Canada and the United States. A very important weekend for both countries. So it is Sakura Ishibashi still in P2. We see Andrew Draco. As, as, as drivers, it must be irritating to see to hear the fireworks going off. No idea where they're at right now, but they're not near the exhibition place. Uh, at least not the landing area. So there's Andrew Draco. So Andrew Draco is sitting in third now. There's Jesus Cristobal. Cristobal is now a lap down. 6.08 seconds, the gap from first to second. And there's another two seconds back down to third. Andrew Draco now sitting on... On the podium, a another bad pit stop for Agia. This time it's Isabel. Isabel's still sitting fourth, so still in contention. Wessel didn't have the greatest pit stop either. So he's still behind Porter Kelly, sitting sixth. But there you see, you've got David, you've got Gerard Perth sitting in seventh, right on the cusp of being on the gearbox of David Wessel. Then you have Kaylee Zappa sitting in 8th, Ray Taylor back in ninth, and Nicole Letty in 10th. So 7th through 10th, still the same. It's all in the top 6 that's shuffled. Except for the leader, Hazel Lacasse. Keisha Fox still sitting in 11th. A lot closer to Lecty than what she was. Cameron Jackson's up a position. Now he's sitting in 12th. So Cameron Jackson started 20th. He's now gained 8 positions. Through two rounds of pit stops, Siri Lundquist sitting 13th, so she's gained positions as well. She started 19th. So, the drivers that started on the 10th row have made up a lot of positions so far in this race. And Lundquist has overtaken Christina Spinoza. Jace Clark's made up positions. Patrick Marcelli has dropped back a little bit with that last round of pit stops. Not so stellar. Ronald Walker is staying made relatively stagnant. Kenosha is having a bad day, not being able to pass. Pit stops being below par as well. Esther Hobson, a, another a poor round of pit stops for Esther Hobson. Then you have Brad Neri. Lucian Lachapelle, who's two laps down, has not really been in his been thrown off and really just kind of riding around the entire time. At this point for the 22, it's all about experience. Get LaChapelle as much experience as he can because he's going to need it for Belle Isle, the bumpiest track on the calendar here in 2020. Belle Isle is known for notoriously being bumpy. It's the only thing comparable to Sebring. And even then, depending on the drivers you ask, people will say that Belle Isle can be bumpier than Sebring. You see Simona LaRoe sitting just ahead of Cody Blackman. A very bad weekend for highlight racing. Cody Blackman. Not a lot we can say about Cody Blackman. He's not performed at all this season. The only race he performed well was Motegi, and that was mostly through a, a good a, 
a lucky caution timing. That's his only top 10 of the season. The only time he's been anywhere close to the top 10. See Natalia Kurochenko hoping for a yellow. She might be able to make something happen. Kurochenko is one of the more aggressive overtakers in the champ car grid. Then you see Tyler Parker, who's a lap down. And then you see Tyler Parker's teammate, Hazel LaCasse. Not a great run around so far for Tyler Parker. Especially, it's not going to be a good look if he gets passed by his rookie teammate. If he gets slapped by his rookie teammate, I have a feeling that a lot of writing will be on the wall for a big lineup change in 2021 for Team Impulse. So Tyler Parker's got a lot to really fight for when Hazel DeCast gets here. I don't think it's going to be a friendly uh, altercation between the two. But the gap's been open dramatically. 5.6 seconds is the gap between Team Impulse. So right now, the, it's sequentially, excluding Hazel's crystal ball, three of the four cars in this group... In, uh, on track is Tyler Parker, Hazel LaCasse, Hazel's Crystal Ball, who's a lap down. You see him right behind La, uh, LaCasse now. And then Sakura Shibashi. Team Impulse, minus Tyler Parker, which we're assuming had an electrical issue. But Team Impulse have been on the ball today in Toronto. 2018, the first time Alpine was in Champ Car, they swept the Toronto doubleheader. Alicia Kovalkiewicz won both the Saturday and the Sunday race in Toronto. Alpine's looking to do it again, this time with Hazel LaCasse, another rookie. Kovalkiewicz was a rookie when she won her two races. This weekend, there's only one race. But Alpine's looking to win this one too. Trying to become the kings and queens of Toronto. Lacasse developing a massive fan following, especially in her home country of New Zealand. She is a flying Kiwi for sure. Yeah, Hazes Cristobal trying to keep pace here. You've got Sakurishi Bashi trying to close the gap. It's down to 5.5. Andrew Draco, Andrew Draco sitting here at this point in time. Andrew Draco si is sitting the best of all the championship contenders. Ishibashi makes up some ground, sure. Makes up five points. Draco makes up ground. Draco extends the gap over Porter Kelly. Extends the gap over Isabel Espinosa. Extends the gap over Natalia Korochenko, Kimitsu Kenoshita. All of the championship contenders except for Ishibashi. He opens a gap on. So for... For Andrew Draco right now, given that this is the team's home race, it's looking really good for Andrew Draco. This is this is going to be a very good race to celebrate for the team. And you hear the fireworks going on around the track. They're off in the distance, we know that. But... It's very interesting given how late in the afternoon this race is running. The party has started, and it has not stopped, it seems. For the drivers, it's got to be distracting. For the pit crews, it could very well be distracting to the pit crews. It's a very interesting shift, and the fact that it's so close to the track definitely brings some concerns. Concerns of possible debris, concerns obviously over the noise, but nothing the organizers can do about that right now. It is a, a, public's, a public venue. And we've seen the drivers that are doing the best with getting along with it despite the distractions. It, you'd imagine the cars would drown it out, but it doesn't. The cars, unfortunately, aren't that loud. They can't drown out everything. These cars have a variety of engines. So for Alpine, it's 
a V6 engine. For for Andrew Draco, it's an inline four. These smaller engines don't produce quite the sound or the the level of sound to really drown out that much as far as you think about the explosive with fireworks. With, especially with the Honda engine, it's very easy to talk over. So you'd imagine that, especially for Draco, you can hear the celebrations and the fireworks and the pyrotechnics going off around around the city of Toronto. We're, we're assuming it's closer to the, the lake, because... We're assuming it's closer to Lake Erie. Because we're not seeing it anywhere. We're, we're glancing up at the sky. We're not seeing any fireworks in the immediate vicinity of the track. It's it's just all noise. But those noises are incredible. So we're following Andrew Draco now as he tries to navigate all of it. He's He's... The driver with the most to lose with all this distraction. This team is is running at peak performance right now. So I was watching the broadcast. We apologize for the noise. It's not our fault this time. Anyone that complains that racing makes a lot of noise, watch the space next year. Looking at you, Portland. See, like, see, Hazel Lacasse is kind of dropping back. It's down to about four seconds once again. Lacasse is coasting because Hazel's crystal ball's caught up. Lacasse is not trying to catch Tyler Parker. She's trying to keep Tyler Parker on the lead lap. You can see that. Her, her times have slowed considerably. We're talking by almost... Half a second a lap. She's trying to keep Tyler Parker on the lead lap at least till the next set of pit stops, which are just in about five or six laps. But now, here it is. Lagasse like sees Parker. Now she's dealing with dirty air. So we're looking here at... Uh, what what is Lacasse going to be able to do? We're assuming that she's going to be able to pass Parker with relative ease. We're assuming that Parker's not running at full power. Parker's going to come in the pit lane. They're going to pull Parker in early. His race, not really much to sacrifice. Now Lacasse can go. I would not be surprised to watch the cast start pulling that gap back open. It's down under three and a half, three and three quarter seconds. Three point six is where it's at now between her and her teammate Sakura Shibashi. Coming down the Lakeshore Boulevard now, going into turn three. As tidy as you like. We should see if Lacasse can make it any further. She went, she's went. she gone 21 laps. The first two pit stops. She made it to lap 21, then lap 42. 63? You'd like to see her make it to lap 64. If she can stretch it that extra lap, she can make sure she can make those tires that she gets on this next pit, round of pit stops. Make them last to the end. Otherwise, she's going to be making a next pit stop, and that is 35 seconds essentially gone to the wind. She's been the first to pit each single round of pit stops. You can't keep doing that, especially if you're trying to make it last to the end. Not without forcing yourself into an extra pit stop. These tires blister incredibly quick. Firestone makes safe tires, but the tires are, are dealing with a, a lot of abrasive surfaces. How much, how much transition is going between concrete to tarmac? Especially the varying levels of asphalt, as you're seeing the, the different coloring, the different age of the, the concrete. There's a lot of transitional surfaces, and each transitional surface is of a different abrasive texture, a different a different 
It's a different a different battle on the tires. So we're looking at we're, we're keeping on Hazel Cast just because she will come in first. We're very certain of that. It's just a matter of when does she come in. And the gap has opened back up now, four and a half seconds between her and Sakura Ishibashi. For Phantom Motorsports, this stop, when it comes, is going to be a big stop because this could put Andrew Draco in second place and put an end to this this Team Impulse 1 2. It also could, could, would really submit him as the championship leader because he would be ahead of all of his championship contenders. Gaps come down a little bit more now. It was almost four and a half. Now it's 4.2. There's the gap between Draco and Isabel Espinoza as Espinoza enters turn three. Then it's an, an even bigger gap between Espinoza and Porter Kelly. Porter Kelly still dealing with David Wessel. Wessel didn't have a great pit stop, but he's been hounding Porter Kelly's gearbox all stint. Hopefully he has a better pit stop this time around. Gerard Purse still sitting in 7th. Kelly Zappa 8th. Ray Taylor 9th. Nicole Lecky's dropped back just a little bit, but she's still sitting easily in top 10. Then it is Keisha Fox, Cameron Jackson. Cameron Jackson trying to get back in the top 10. Increase his top 10 streak up to 3 races. Then you have Siri Lundquist who's had pit stop after pit stop of brilliance. Lundqvist is doing a fantastic job, and she's had a decent amount of clean air. Hasn't set a, a, a relatively remarkable lap time. Andrew Draco with the 54-7 takes the fastest lap so far. Incredible lap time from Andrew Draco during the race, during full fuel. Cameron Jackson with the second fastest lap at 55-115. But no one's touching Andrew Draco right now. For a period of time, Andrew Draco has been the fastest man on circuit. Lacasse going to make it one extra lap, so she's going to try to stretch the next set of tires she gets. She's going to try to stretch them to the finish. Four and a half is the gap. Relatively safe gap there. Andrew Draco going to... He's getting closer to Ishibashi. Can he make a pass before the pit stops happen? He's not going to make it this time around. He's too far back. Ishibashi's going to play a little bit defensive anyway. Moves over to the right before moving back to the left and breaking. So Ishibashi's beginning to play defense. That's going to help Hazel LaCasse tremendously because that's going to open up more time. Expecting to see LaCasse come into the pit lane this lap. She's not going to do so. She's going to stay out an extra lap. She's going to make sure that she has the best set of tires coming into the final 20 laps of the race. Now the cast is stretching the tires out. The gap is still reducing by about a tenth a lap. It's not enough time to reduce a tenth a lap for the next 20 laps. Andrew Drake is still closer and closer trying to fight through the dirty air. The tires are blistering. Tires are, at this point are crying. Ishibashi tried to feign over to the right again. The battle for second is definitely heating up between a driver that could potentially end up being a world champion and a driver that has already been world champion once before. Phantom Motorsports wants to establish itself as a really a powerhouse team. Impulse is already there. Agio questioning whether Agia is still there. Strike of Motorsports has been there. Phantom Motorsports wants its name in that conversation. Lacasse comes in the pit lane, so she's finally pit. And she's still pitting before that of Ishibashi and, and Andrew Draco. So top three now is Ishibashi, Draco, and Espinoza.
If Akasha were to come out now, this race would be flipped on its head. But so far, the race has been caution-free. There has not been a caution-free race at all yet this season. Could Toronto, a street circuit of all places, be the first? We're about to find out. Ishibashi's coming in. So is Andrew Draco as they run over that curving, entering pit lane. Espinosa's going to follow, so the top three follow the suit. Stephanie Porter Kelly going to get the bonus point for leading a lap. So she's going to use the clean air to try to break away from David Wessel before coming into pit lane. Ronald Walker's a lap down temporarily. Kelly Zappa stays out. So does Ray Taylor. Then you see Jace Clark, Patrick Marcelli. There's Kenosha, there's Hofson, Neri, LaChapelle. LaRoe. Tyler Parker is back in, uh, right in front of Le uh, Hazel LaCasse. And there's Espinoza. Not Espinoza. There's Ishibashi. Espe Espinoza and Ishibashi have been near each other all race long. But that gap has opened significantly between Ishibashi and Draco. A, a, a sigh of relief for Ishibashi to have a better pit stop than Draco. First, the, the money stop pit stop for Impulse was just a little bit better than that of, of Phantom Motorsports. But Draco is still provisionally able to hold on to third, unless Porter Kelly has a phenomenal pit stop. Should, should see Draco still hold on to third place when all of this is shaken out. David Wessel leads the lap, so Wessel's still out. That is an, an impressive change of pace. Drivers are trying to stretch this out as much as they can. They're hoping for a yellow, but the, the cars are just too spread out. You need a failure, a mechanical failure of some kind, to really draw out a yellow. I don't see it working too awful well. For Wessel, I think he kind of needed to. He's been stuck behind Porter Kelly the entire last 23 laps. But, as you hear the fireworks still going off, a lot of stuff can happen. We could have a debris caution. We could have... A, a very bad pit stop or a very stellar pit stop. Lacasse trying super hard. Trying to give Tyler Parker the benefit of the doubt, but she's got to get by the sixth car. She simply got to. Ishibashi's closing the gap so much. It was a six second cap. Now it's 4.6. Most of the last people have come into pit lane. It's Hazel to cast back out in front. 2.7. That's the gap. It's now a lot easier to see. It's the 6, the 12, and the 3. The cast is going to have to pull the trigger and get just in. did just have to do it. She's going to have to get by Tyler Parker. Tyler Parker's on older tires. You see him fighting it. He's running so much wider through the middle part of the track. Going into another the the, the very tight left right left sequence to finish the lap. She's you can tell that she's suffering under in the dirty air. She's having to fight it so much. This race is not over. We're coming to 16 to go. We're at 16 to go now. And the top three is almost under a blanket for the first time all race long. And it's all because of lap traffic. And lap traffic's not easy to navigate. This is the cast's first real challenge with dealing with lap traffic. She's not had to deal with it before. Ishibashi has. Draco has. There's veteran experience with that. Tyler Parker has no reason to give up. He knows, oh, he knows what the optics look like if he gets lapped by his rookie teammate who's in her third ever champ car race. He knows what that, he knows what, what that looks like. So he's definitely going to fight and as a team principal, who knows what Matsuo is thinking? Assuming Matsuo is probably 
a nervous wreck right now seeing all three of her cars right now in one screenshot. There. The 6, 12, and the 3. All right there. One one misstep, one overzealous attempt, and it, it could spell disaster for the entire team this weekend. But all three cars now knows the tail. The top three all here. We know that Hazel Lacasse has the best car on track. The way she's been able to to really keep momentum is has been the key. Andrew Draco's had the fastest single lap pace, but he can't navigate dirty air. Lacasse is just being too generous. This is the closest she's getting to him. She's slowly edging closer. She's she's holding off as much as she can from lapping him. But it's not helping. David Wessel was the last one of the last ones to pit. He's still sitting sixth. So he didn't lose anything by staying out. Ray Taylor lost a position. He lost a position to Lecti, but Ray Taylor still sits in tenth. That's still a respectable finish for Ray Taylor on his home race. Sherrard Purse still 7th, so the team still has two respectable finishes in the top 10. Kelly Zappa sitting 8th, Nicole Lecti 9th. You have Keisha Fox, you have both of the, the Cherokee GP cars sitting 11th and 12th. Cameron Jackson sitting 13th, he lost one position on that pit stop. So as we, as we look further back, there is 6th place David Wessel. We looked at the top 5. Gerard Perth, Kelly Zappa... Cole Lecty, Ray Taylor. It is close between 9th and 10th still. Natalia Korachenko has officially been lapped. Then you have Keisha Fox. You have Siri Lundquist. On her debut, she started 19th, but she's up to 12th. Cameron Jackson lost one position, but now he's got to hit. Once again, he's got to fend off Christine Espinoza. Very reminiscent of Valkenberg. Very reminiscent of Lausitz. But he's done it both times. You have Jace Clark sitting in 15th. Patrick Marcelli sitting back down in 16th after being close to the top 10 early on. Ronald Walker making the most of that Apex Racing team car. Easily the worst team car on the grid. He's making it work the best he can. He's sitting in front of Kamitsu Kenoshida. He's had a, a very abysmal race stuck in traffic. A bad pit stop left after Hassan sitting in 19th. She's not getting anywhere. She's on an island. Brad Neri on his first road course race. A learning experience for him. We have Luce and LaChapelle two laps down. Was never in it from the start. A learning experience for the 22 car. Simone LaRue highlight racing. A very abysmal performance. The worst performance the team has seen all season. And then Cody Blackman. The last car on the lead lap at this very moment. Next to Tyler Parker, who's still sitting as close to the lead lap as he can. It's the top four, top five, all in a blanket. 11 laps to go here in Toronto. For Team Impulse, it is it is the most nerve-wracking 11 laps. It's been the most nerve-wracking 20 laps. And it's not getting any easier. For those that are just tuning in, it's been a very festive day around the streets of Toronto. Here in Exhibition Place. You hear the fireworks that have been going around. It's been an incredible week, a terrible weekend for both Canada and the United States. As distracted as the sounds of the pyrotechnics are in the distance, the drivers we're looking at right now are dead on focused. Ten laps to go. It's the cast leading. Her first champ car race win is in sight. Sakura Ishibashi sitting in second. Andrew Draco sitting in third. It's not over in the slightest. The cast is going to make a move now. To the inside on turn three. 
trying to give as much room to Tyler Parker as she can. She's got the car. She'll make it stick. LaCasse clears Parker. And now Sakura Ishibashi is going to try to do the same. The time has come. This is, might have been a team move. Parker carried the momentum. So Parker's still ahead of Ishibashi. Lacasse cleared. Ishibashi didn't. Coming around turn two now. This is going to be very sketchy. Lacasse made it happen. And now, Tom, now Andrew Draco is trying to make a move. He will get the second, but it's not over. Second through sixth, all in a line behind Tyler Parker. Parker comes in the pit lane now. That has been costly to Team Impulse's 1-2. Can Ishibashi... Can Ishibashi make it back? The hunt is on for Andrew Draco. Can he catch back up to Lacasse? Two laps worth of time has been lost. All eyes right now are on Andrew Draco and Sakura Ishibashi. This is about to be a fight. Two and a half was the gap that last lap. Coming to the line now. Coming to seven to go. It's down below two. Over almost half a second. Was shaved off that lap. The floodgates are open. Only one car in front. Hazel LaCasse is going to have some massive defense to play. This is not over yet at all. Seven laps to go. Coming to six to go at the line this time. We're looking at Andrew Draco. He's, he's the one with the best chance. We've had nine different winners so far this season. LaCasse could make it ten. Draco's trying to become the first repeat winner of the season. So is Ishibashi. And Espinoza. And Portokelli. This top six that we're looking at right now is as talented as it gets. The consistency that these top six have shown all race long has been unmatched unparalleled. Six to go. It's down to one and a half. It's, oh, it's closing by almost half a second a lap. Despite her best efforts, LaCasse still has the oldest tires of anyone on track right now. We have no doubts that, that all the top six can make it to the finish. The question is now, can LaCasse hold off Andrew Draco for five more laps? Coming around the final corner now, To five to go. It's becoming a two-horse race. It's Lacasse and Draco. Ishibashi's 2.3 back from Lacasse. It's 108. 1.08. The gap has been eaten away. This is where Dirty Air comes to play. Lacasse has got to play a brilliant defense. Can she do it? And you see, you we're watching the gap visibly shrink. Below a second now is what the gap is now. 
Lacasse has led so much of the race today. To the fans in New England, not New England, New Zealand, this could be bad. For the, the fans in New England, this could be great. Draco is Draco and Russell, especially Russell being from New Jersey. New England loves Phantom Motorsports. The fans here in Canada love Andrew Draco. This is a big ordeal. Four laps left in this race. And we still have no idea how this is going to go. We have to be mindful of the car sitting coming up. Lacasse from Auckland, New Zealand. Andrew Drake is from San Francisco. But the New England crowd love him. And the team, the team fan of motorsports is loved a lot in New England. David Wessel run in the, the regional series, the regional karting series, the regional, the Formula 2000s. By association, when he got picked up by Phantom Motorsports, they picked up Andrew Draco and followed him as well. We're coming to two to go. Two laps left. Ishibashi's still not out of the question. She's only lost a tenth in the last two laps. The defense is going to have to be fierce. Lacasse has to put as much dirty air in front of Draco as she can. Next to last lap, here we go through turn two. This is, this is what Champ Car is all about. Close racing after almost 200 miles. To those that had any questions as to if this race was going to be any good with a new car. Yes, it has. The stat lines will show that Lacasse has dominated this race, but we're coming to the white flag and it's still not over. Through the final complex of corners, turn 10 and turn 11. Lacasse is going to bring us to the white flag. Can she hold it? Point three is the gap. This is the closest Draco's been. He sails it into turn one. He's on the gearbox. Is he going to lunge it? Is he going to go? No, he he had he broke at the same time. Had to give up a little bit of time. It's not over yet. Draco's going to make a move. He makes a lunge. A lunge through turn five. It didn't pay off. He lost a little bit of time. It's almost... It's almost over for the 10th race of the AT&T Champ Car World Series season. There'll be a 10th different winner. Draco came so close, but it's Hazel Lacasse, winner in Toronto. Lacasse wins it over Andrew Draco, and that was a showdown for the season books. Sakura Shibashi with third. Isabel Espinosa holds on to fourth. Fifth is Stephanie Porter Kelly. Sixth is David Wessel. Seventh is Kelly Zappa. Eighth is Gerard Perth for LM competition. Nicole Letty holds on to ninth. Tenth is Ray Taylor, the hometown kid, hometown hero. Pulls in the top 10. An amazing result for him. Amazing result for Elm Competition after the, the season they've had. 
You look further down the grid, it is Cherokee GP with an 11th and a 12th. Keisha Fox held on to where she started. Actually gained these positions from where she started. Siri Lundquist, on her, on her return to Champ Car, started 19th, finished 12th, gained 7 positions. The same can be said for Cameron Jackson. 7 positions gained for him. They both started in the 10th row. Then you had Christina Spinoza in 14th, Jace Clark in 15th. You had Patrick Marcelli 16th, Ronald Walker after starting 25th finished his 17th. 18th is Kinomitsu Kenoshita after starting in 11th position, a loss of 7 positions. Not a great run for Kenoshita. A very abysmal run for Esther Hofson. Had so much potential after qualifying of potentially breaking into the top 10. It seemed like she had enough fight in her. But a bad pit stop threw her back in the pack, and she was never able to recover. Brad Neri, on his road course debut, finishes 20th after starting 20, 24th. So he still gained positions. Simona LaRoe down to 21st, a weekend to forget, an abysmal result for highlight racing after being on the podium. So a lot of stuff to go back to the record, uh, to the the drawing board for highlight racing as we get ready to go to another street circuit uh, in Belle Isle and Detroit in two weeks' time. Cody Blackman being 22nd, next to last on the lead lap. Jesus Cristobal managed to stay on the lead lap, um, finishing 23rd. All 26 drivers finished the race with Natalia Kurachenko, Tyler Parker, one lap down in Lucian Lachapelle after suffering the electrical issue on the grid. Was two laps down the entire race. Didn't lose any more time. Had the pace to stay on the lead lap if he had been able to have the chance. But unfortunately, not the start he wanted. And there was never any any chance to make it up. There was no cautions. The first caution-free race of the season comes at a street circuit. So a lot of good talking points. An amazing race. A stellar result. Hazel Lacasse, 10th different winner of the season. Her maiden pole, her maiden race win. For Alpine, it's another win at Toronto, three in a row. And for Team Impulse, solidifying that they are at one of the top positions in the champ car field. The same can be said for Fiona Motorsports. They are absolutely there. Isabel Espinosa, a lot to follow now that she has solidified that she is one of the top free agents. What happened between Isabella Spinoza being in fourth and what happened to Christina Spinoza being down in 14th position? That's going to be something to follow, especially as everything unwinds. As you think about the, the debriefing is on Monday and Tuesday. All of the media is going to be crazy. We saw the return of Siri Lindquist started 19th, a very bad starting position after being very flustered in qualifying. We see why Siri Lindquist was so revered and why people won her so bad. Made it up. Very confident, very posed in her return. And as far as the race has gone, she, uh, Cameron Jackson, a great recovery drive. But that's going to do it for this race. It's been an absolutely fantastic event, fantastic weekend to everyone that is celebrating in the United States and Canada for Canada Day and Independence Day. Be safe. Be happy. We hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you in two weeks. It's Belle Isle for the General Motors Grand Prix of Detroit. Round 11. We're past the halfway point. We hope you see us when we come in. In two weeks' time, it's Saturday, 9 p.m. This has been the AT&T Champ Car World Series. And we'll see you next time.